My name is Bill Wingle. In this section, I'll be discussing the basic controls and components of the Garmin eTrex 20X and 30X. This happens to be a slightly older model, the eTrex 30, but it's basically the same thing as the newer models. This is a handheld GPS. The components are we have the screen here, which is where all the display, everything is displayed, the map, your trip information, things like that. We also have six buttons on the GPS. This button here is labeled light. It also doubles as the power button. They have a button up here called the back button. This is what I actually prefer to call the page button. It serves a couple purposes. As a back button, when you dig down into different, different menus and screens, this is, allows you to back up more towards the top level screens. Once you're on the top level screen, if you get this set up the way I like to set it up, I will have multiple pages where I can press this button and it will toggle from page to page to page and then cycle around to the first page that you've defined and kind of do an infinite, infinite loop. On the other side, we have a menu button. Uh, various pages require different setup and, and uh, different setup and offers you some additional controls. That's where you'll use the menu button here. There are also two buttons above that. And when you're on the mapping page, these buttons will allow you to zoom in and zoom out. On the back of the GPS, there's a little rubber thing here to keep it watertight. And behind it is, a, is your USB port. You will notice on this GPS, I have uh, the carabiner clip attached to it. I also have a lanyard attached to the GPS. I, have, I do competitive horseback trail riding and I usually tie this to my horse's saddle. I found that if you only have one method to tie it to, your, uh, to yourself or to your horse, um, both of these will eventually break. And, and unfortunately, at one point in time, I had both break at the same time. Fortunately, it was just outside my trailer, and I found the GPS in fairly short order. Everybody I've known, though, who does not use one of these, and even though some many of those who have used one of these, um, they have still lost their GPSs because things fail. Um, or the GPS falls out of your pocket, things like that. One additional thing is... This carabiner clip comes off, and on the back side, you can see this little uh, part here. This rotates and pulls off, and you can see your battery batteries behind it. There's actually space for a little uh, micro SD card underneath these batteries where you can load um, a micro SD that has a Garmin Maps or various other um, you can also use it for various data and other things. Uh, to put it all back together, just snaps, twist it. Do not use this to tie a string to or put a carabiner through. I have had one friend who did this, and what happens is you get out on the trail, and your string or your carabiner that's attached to this rotates it, and then when you get back to camp, you find you have the back plate, but the main part of the GPS is gone. Um, just as a forewarning. Putting it all back together, folding that down, putting the clip on. Okay, so those are the basic parts of the GPS. To turn on the GPS, we go back to this light button over here, and you just uh, press in on it and release. And it's going to take about 30 seconds for the Garmin to boot up to a usable state. Just because the GPS is booted up to a usable state, though, doesn't mean that the GPS knows where it's at. This has been turned off for a while, and it takes about the, it takes the GPS up to about five minutes for it to figure out where it actually is in the world. Um, where you can get into a little bit of trouble with that is if you've been uh, use use the GPS at some other location in some other state. It when you turn it on, it's still going to think it is where you used it last. So if you're going to be using this, you want to turn it on several minutes before you actually need to have accurate information, give it time to warm up, give it time to figure out where it's at. Once it's fully booted up, you'll see that you have a number of icons on the screen. 
And these are the different controls where it's map, uh, waypoint information, things like that. And you can toggle around using the toggle button to the different items. And when you find what you want to set, you press straight in on the button and it may take you to a description of what's going on. It may take you to a sub menu and we'll dig down a little bit further here. And this happens to be the setup page and we can set some different details with the GPS. Once you're happy with what you've done there and you want to go over to the back, back up to the top level menu, you press the back button and it will return you after a couple clicks back up to the top level screen. As I mentioned, this is the page button and it, this is not how it ships by default, but I have selected some additional pages and I can continue to hit the back button here and you can see that I can toggle through to the compass, uh, my map screen, satellite screen, a list of different tracks that I've loaded on the GPS, and my trip odometer, uh, my trip odometer page. And it takes me back to the main menu. To this light button does an, a couple additional things. If you press it quickly, you'll see that we can see what the battery level is and what our GPS signal strength is. Let me click that again. We can also set how bright the backlight is on the screen. We can make it very bright, we can turn it off, or we can set it to some intermediate level just by clicking this button. Final thing I'll show you is how to turn the GPS off. And basically you just press the, sa the same light button, but instead of clicking and releasing quickly, you press and hold until the GPS turns itself off. That completes the section.